Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hey, Mondo, do we have everyone here with you? I see. I see Matt. Hey, Matt. Hey, Tabitha. How are you doing? Good. Good. <laughs> Let's see. I think we're waiting on Glenn. Okay. Not sure if you got a message from him or not. No. Is Ted up here? Um, I think he may be in a different room. Oh, okay. I have him on this list to be in here today. Okay. So we're waiting on Glenn. So while we're waiting on Glenn, I'm gonna go ahead and welcome everyone to our afternoon discussion, Office 365 panel discussion. This session is sponsored by our platinum sponsor, Cisco. Cisco is blazing the trail to digital transformation in state and local government with technologies and services that transform citizen experiences, agency processes, and business models. Our solutions in cloud computing, cybersecurity, and collaboration connect government anywhere, anytime to better serve their communities. Cisco delivers strategies for digitization that meets today's needs. Hold on just a second. Wrong sponsor. Let's start again. Our sponsor uh -huh. for this session is 5S Technologies. They are one of our platinum sponsors. Cisco was from yesterday. 5S Technologies is a regional IT solutions and services provider based in Cary, North Carolina and serving the Carolinas. We are focused on removing complexity from IT for our customers, whether their applications run on premises or in the cloud. 5S can assist with planning, design, sales and implementation of the latest data center technologies with practice expertise in cloud virtualization and networking. We also offer a wide range of project-based professional services or ongoing managed services. All of our services offerings are custom tailored to meet the needs and budgets of our individual clients. Contact us today to learn how we can support your technology goals. Is Glenn with us yet? I do not see him, but we may have to go on without okay. him. We'll get started without Glenn and I'll go ahead on it. Um, introduce our panel guests on this afternoon. Um, Mr. Glenn Hastett is the ITS Director for Onslow County and a 2008 graduate of the UNC CGCIO program. He has been in local government since 1998. The team he leads has been recognized for his innovative work and the methodology he uses is based on separate leadership as well as experience. Glenn also serves on the Nickel Jesus Board as the President-Elect. Also with us this afternoon, we have Mr. Demondra Hall. He's the ITS specialist for Onzo County. He has served the county for over three years. His duties include import support and share port management. He takes pride in providing the best customer service possible. And last but not least, my friend, Matt. He's an IT specialist with Onzo County. He's served with them for 14 years and three years under military contract. He is a 2018 UNC CGCIO program graduate and all around technical support with strong focus on SharePoint, Web EOC, and other public safety applications. Matt loves to travel and to enjoy life with his family. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Matt and Demandra, and I'll let them take it away. Hey, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Office 365 panel here. This is uh, uh, our time to kind of show you uh, what we've kind of done with Office 365. Uh, we've had it since uh, 2015 and uh, decided to um, uh, embrace it at, at that point. And what we're going to kind of show you today is what we've done with it, uh, um, how we've implemented, implemented it in our uh, system as well as I understand that we have a huge range of an audience here. So it could range from those that currently have it, uh, those that are having, or that are interested in, in what Office 365 has uh, available for them. Um, and so we're, we're happy to uh, share that with you today. 
Um, but if you do have any questions as we go through this, you know, we're, we're uh, just go ahead and type it in the chat or unmute your mic and we'll, we'll be happy to answer them as we go through this together. So do you have anything else to add, Dre? There we go. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. All right, great. Um, no, I, I don't have anything else to add at the moment. Um, the, uh, I, I can say that I kind of came in after the initial implementation of uh, moving from moving to Office 365, um, but I kind of jumped right into the SharePoint por portion. And um, um, I'm hoping we can show a little bit of uh, what we've done so far. All right, so what I can kind of do here is uh, the, the first thing that we'll probably kind of show you here is, um, is how Office 365 kind of looks here. So if I can just share my screen. All right. So um, right now, you should be seeing our uh, intranet site. This is uh, uh, made out of SharePoint. So let me back up just a little bit here. Uh, of course, uh, when we implemented um, Office 365 in 2015, everyone by then was already familiar with what uh, uh, the Office suite had to provide, you know, Word, Access, Excel, all the standard programs. So it, it was uh, when we kind of announced it to everyone, we kind of shared with them that this is this is coming down the pike. Um, but a lot of them weren't too worried about it. They were wondering why there was a lot of uh, a promotion for it, uh, but they were already familiar with it to begin with because we pretty much had it in-house. So we, we kept it that way, we kept it simple. And then of course, with the uh, Office suite, uh, there's all the different, um, uh, apps that it has that comes with it, Delve, Forms, SharePoint, OneDrive, uh, Microsoft Teams, and Planner. Um, we didn't want to inundate them uh, with all that information all at one time. So we decided, okay, we're going to go ahead and keep it simple. We're just going to introduce them to OneDrive. So pretty much OneDrive is your My Documents, where we have it on the network right now. Now you can put it up in the cloud. So that was a little scary for some. But uh, uh, after we kind of uh, promoted that and uh, educated on what that uh, meant, uh, they, they pretty much embraced it, explained to them that they can access their files anywhere. You don't necessarily have to be within our network, but um, outside the network. And you can share it with uh, other employees as well as uh, um, external agencies. Um, so they, they kind of like the thought of that. And um, so, that that uh, that was pretty much just like the first first year of implementing. We 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 show, showed them OneDrive, made sure everyone had Office 365 access, and then in addition to that, we provided um, I think it was uh, brainstorm uh, training. It was a uh, yeah, it was a uh, so pretty much if they if they needed a brush up on their Office 365 skills as well as what Office 365 had to offer everyone had access to this training, uh, online training to where they can learn additional tips and tricks with Word or OneDrive. So it went along with it. Right, um, Glenn played a, played a huge part in the uh, evangelism of moving to 365, holding formal trainings and um, bringing on liaisons from each department to kind of help foster and, and help other users within each department kind of get used to what they're going to be looking at. Uh, on top of that, we, like you said, we did add the brainstorm uh, quick, quick help um, product. Um, and that's sort of a, a points based solution to allow users to um, learn more about the 365 product. Um, it's constantly updating. You can assign certain um, uh, products, Excel, PowerPoint to uh, different users or, or groups and have them learn more about what they'll be using on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so that that's helped a lot, kind of help users along, keeps it competitive. Um, they can track their points. We can all track uh, all the different users. So you're kind of trying to see where you are compared to other people. 
Yeah. So, I mean, the, the training and the There's implementation the... Are, are, um, are really one thing. Um, and if you guys um, want to talk, you know, if you guys want information about, you know, how we did the training or how we did the, how we got the buy-in from the users and stuff like that, you can email me um, and, you know, we can set up a meeting. I'll talk to you at any point about all that. You know, I'd be happy to help. Um, I think, Matt, I think, and uh, Dre, I think what's really, um, what we get a lot of questions about, because we seem to be like the 365 people, I guess, is, is how people look at us. <laughs> Um, and so we, what we get a lot of questions about is, is, um, you know, SharePoint. Um, oh, by the way, yes, we did move our exchange at the same time. We, we did everything at once, Bryce. Um, so we did exchange, um, the classes that Matt's talking about. We did, um, an Outlook class. We did a OneNote class because I'm a OneNote junkie and we did a, um, uh, uh, OneDrive, uh, Skype class. Um, so we we're trying to teach people how to do it, but. Matt, why don't you bring up our um, our intranet, our staff only site, our ITS staff only site. Okay. Um, and and so when we talk about SharePoint, right? There's two different things. The intranet is great, and that's like become an you know a great source of communication uh, throughout our organization. But we've also started building sites like this, um, and this is really everything IT in one site. Um, you know, we go here and it has every link. It has all our documentation. When someone works on something, when somebody figures something out, this is where it goes. Cause we don't want one person to know everything or one person to only, you know, know things. We want everyone to share that knowledge. And so, um, if this is where everything goes and it's our one stop shop and what's awesome is you can hit this from your cell phone. Um, and that's really one of the more powerful things is all those buttons that you see, those are just links and they'll take you right into that application. And then we use LastPass now to manage access into it. So as long as you have your LastPass, you just boom, you're right in. So I guess let, let's open it up. I mean, we can show some of this stuff as we go, but I say let's, um, let's see what questions do you guys have? Because there's a bunch of people that are just now implementing 365 or they're implementing different pieces of it. Um, you know, what, what's your challenge right now or what's your questions that you would like to see some answer to? I'm sure, um, I'm sure Molly has a question for us. Hey Glenn, this is uh, Travis from Moore County. Um, hey, buddy. We're, you know, we're about halfway, well, about three quarters way through implementing this, um, but we're getting ready to start SharePoint. And so at first, you know, we had contemplated just using Teams as a form of SharePoint. Um, but I think we have kind of went away from that. And I, I think looking at what you got here, it looks like, you know, you're, you're just doing everything strictly through SharePoint for, I guess, department files. Is that correct? No, we, we have both. I mean, everything lives in SharePoint, right? Even if it's in Teams, it's in SharePoint right. somewhere. Right. Um, but, but I get, well, let me rephrase the question. So our big thing is department folders. So mm -hmm. where do the department share, you know, those uh, files and folders? Are you doing a SharePoint page just strictly for that? Or are you creating that inside their Teams uh, group? Well, let me let the guys answer this one. <laughs> Yeah, so um, so not it, it is connected to Teams, so we can access it there. But we have it right here with uh, built into the page, so that we can access it here also. And of course, with Office three sixty five, we're finding out more how a lot of this is connected. So with our our what we labeled our document cloud, it's also connected and accessible from Outlook as well. So um, we we've okay. tried to make it to where our files are accessible here. Uh, so it, so it sounds like you do a little bit of both. They can access it via Teams or this uh, this page you have up now. That's right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, we definitely try to link it um, uh, within Teams so they can get to those different file stores. So they'll have a department staff-only site that will have multiple document libraries 
And so we just try to make those accessible from the team so they can jump right into it. Um, do you know, um, and I may be getting too, uh, too granular here, but do you know how much they access it via Teams versus going to the SharePoint page and accessing it, like a percentage or anything? That's a great question. I, I, I don't know that. Um, yeah. That would be that kind is, of fascinating to find out. Yeah, that'd be a good analytics, you know. Yeah, to, yeah absolutely. Which one was, was more popular. I would, just guessing, I would say teams because they're in there quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, th thanks for answering my question. Yeah, I mean, actually, you can, if you um, if you want, you can bring up that, um, or I can bring it up. Hold on one second. I'll share my screen in a second. I'll bring up the stats from uh, 365, and I can show out of the admin page, um, you know, the health, the stat page. One second. Stop sharing. No, no, no. Well, yeah, hold oh, on. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get there. Hold on. Let me, I get a click away. You know, I'm a little slower, Matt. Come on, catch up, Glenn. I know, right? That's my life story working with you guys. <laughs> but I didn't know if you caught it on our page. Uh, the nice thing about having the, the, the files linked within the SharePoint page, our emergency contacts was at the top, which was part of our, 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 our DR guide, our disaster recovery guide. So we can, we could embed, um, Excel or PDF files right within our SharePoint page, just sections of it. So that, that was another benefit. So I'm not sure if this is showing what you were what you were looking for, but um, you know we're getting you know quite a few people and stuff in here. We got 1,300 employees. Um, and so you see, you know, almost all of them are active. We've got quite a few of them in SharePoint. We've got, you know, 939 active users in SharePoint right now. And, um, you know, 700 needy on in Teams. And, you know, we were preaching Teams for a year before COVID. And, and frankly, everybody was tired of all the change that we were pushing. Um, and so we kind of felt like we were slogging through mud, trying to get them to embrace teams. Um, but then I guess, luckily COVID came, right? <laughs> That's a hell of a way to say it, but you know, really COVID came and, and they wound up hitting the ground running. Uh, they really understood how to use teams already and they just dove right into it. And there was one less thing for them to worry about was, you know, how are they going to do video conferencing? They'd already been to several classes on it and they understood it. Um, right now we're doing brush up classes on, you know, Hey, if you're going to share something, share it in SharePoint and not OneDrive. if you have a business process associated with it and things like that, some of the finer points, I'm going to stop my share. Yeah. Our, um, our users really love teams. And, and like you said, it was, you know, we, we kind of look, our department looked really good because we had started teams just before, you know, COVID hit. And so, you know, we can, we kind of look like the bee's knees because That's right. you know, we already had that going and then it just, you know, everybody kind of just fell into it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, uh, we got lucky like that too. Oh, uh, SharePoint alerts is available, um, on pages. You, you can on, on a page do an alert um to changes so when that stuff changes you get an email we just don't we don't have a lot of people use them we have it on a little bit of stuff i think you can do it on your lists too dre yeah so dre um dre also did something pretty cool um we had to inventory some equipment last minute he did it up as a as a as an app as a as a power app, I think it was a power app, wasn't it, Troy? Yeah, it is. Um, essentially, through SharePoint or I'm sorry, through Microsoft List is what it's it's called now. Um, but within SharePoint, you can create a list, which will allow you to easily turn that into a um, structured app. Um, so once you uh, create that structured power app, 
it gives you the ability to sort of manipulate that data um, however you want. Um, inventory is like the simplest one, you, you know, that, that you can think of or the simplest thing that comes to mind where you throw in um, a, a few different fields, model numbers, um, descriptions of whatever it is, how many there are, and uh, easily attach, um, you know, pictures to it. Um, it, it there's like, a, this is definitely not the uh, prettiest thing. Um, and this is the, this is kind of the, the list side. But um, as far as the app side, it's not the prettiest thing, but it will, it, in its simplest form, it'll allow you to kind of put that together in a, in a pinch. Um, we don't have anyone right now that's sort of dedicated to exploring um, all the capabilities of the software yet, um, but we uh, will definitely be working with some people to get some, squeeze some more uh, out of what, what's already there, so. You did this with forms, right, Dre? Or uh, actually, you were like collecting it with your phone. How, how did you? Right. So um, it, when you click on the uh, automate portion or uh, drop down there, it'll give you a couple options. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe it's integrate. Yeah, there we go. So you can export that to a Power App and create an app that you will pull up on your phone. Um, or you can pull it up on your on your desktop. Um, either one, as long as you have the link, you can get there. Um, and um, yeah, that, that was it. Yeah, there was a question about whether when we moved them to OneDrive, if we uh, cut off their access to the file location. We didn't. They actually have access to everything. They can store things in OneDrive or SharePoint or their network drive. Um, we try to drive them to um, the 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 format that the the device that's going to work better for them. So it depends. You know, if they're mobile, obviously we'd rather have it in 365. Um, you know, if it's something that you know um, maybe it works better on a network drive. I can't think of anything what would, but you know, if it works better on a network drive, then fine, use a network drive. You know, who cares? Yeah, I think somebody was asking that question before. If we still have um, our network share, and we we definitely do, um, but we're trying to drive uh, as as much as we can users to OneDrive. Um, it gets used a lot for our um, human services departments for forms and, and different things that a lot of them need to access, but. Um, there's definitely a lot of room to grow there to get to get more of the departments on board to use this uh, versus dumping stuff in the network share. Yeah, so we um, I see that in Wake County they locked them into read only user shares, and then you know made them migrate. And that and that's one way to do it. Um, we try to do it through education and um, and classes. So you know we try to. Um, you know, teach them how to use it, teach them, you know, how, how, you know, what, how everything works and what's better for what, um, and then let them make their own kind of decision on how they, what they want to do. Cause some people weren't really comfortable moving stuff into SharePoint. Um, some people had a problem with the old OneDrive app, uh, with it lacking, you know, not syncing. Uh, and so they didn't really trust it. And so they just wanted to stay on the network drives and, you know, hey, stay on the network drives. You know, I'm not trying to cause any angst among the users. Yeah, just to touch base on that a little bit more, um, especially with the, um, the different SharePoint sites that we have for each department, like on our intranet, each department has maybe their own set of forms that they may share with everyone else but we have them also linked to the front page of our intranet. So like the most common ones that would be used for um, uh, safety inspections or uh, what is it when you get hurt, uh, the uh, um, injury report. So, uh, or mileage forms, all of that may come from finance or HR, but then it funnels back to this popular documents form to where it lives in SharePoint. So that let's say the mileage rate changes, all they have to do is, is change the, um, the calculations on the spreadsheet and automatically updates here for everyone to access. So 
that was that was a nice feature that and and of course with everything living in SharePoint just like with OneDrive if you edit it online uh, it doesn't lock anybody out you can continue editing it editing files at the same time someone else is in it so and one thing we did do also to get buy-in for all the SharePoint is we forced everybody's homepage to it and and you know when they open up IE well not IE anymore Edge or Chrome it, it automatically goes here. This is, you know, their homepage. So we right. we took we did take over their homepage. Um, we also had a question about are we using Intune? We did just start using Intune to manage iPads only. Um, I have to change our licensure to an M365 instead of an O365 so that we can get Intune across the board. Uh, for those of you that are confused about um, Microsoft licensure, um, join the club. That uh, you know that is a um, that's a big club. I am going to put a share. I'm going to put something in the um, chat. Um, I'm going to share a, a graphic that I have for Microsoft licensure that may help. And uh, just to add a little bit more to uh, Angie's, uh, Angelia's question earlier with alerts, um, as Glenn mentioned, where you can um, uh, subscribe to any kind of list in here, whether it's in this new section on our internet or the calendar, we have a calendar here that all the employees can see. We give access to some uh, uh, department uh, uh, promoters to where they can post their own calendar events here or, or the announcements on the right and users could then subscribe to that so that if there is new information they get that alert they get that email right away that new information's there but the nice thing about the any calendar that's that lives in SharePoint is that um, of course there's the month view that you can pull up once it comes up any one of the calendars you can in, uh, attach that to your outlook so that if you are someone that updates uh, events on the county calendar frequently or any other SharePoint site, you can do it straight from your Outlook and it automatically updates here. Pretty much by, here's, here's the alert me with notifications, but you can also connect it to Outlook. So it's in both locations. But other departments, of course, they use their calendars for their for their own events, maybe they have a big department and they want to uh, use it for uh, monthly birthdays, um, whatever it may be. For us in our uh, staff only site, we're trying to keep up with end of life um, uh, dates. So, so we, we've, at, we've added that there. Um, and the nice thing about the calendar events is uh, any one of them, you can format it much like a SharePoint page so let's say um, as Friends of Aging Jeans fundraiser, um, we can give it a nice graphic and throw attachments to it. And, and what this pretty much is, if you're from, unfamiliar with it, is for within the county, we have some uh, uh, events to where if you donate, you get to wear jeans in the office. So that's, that's always exciting, so. There was there was a question about you know um, how do we stop people from sharing things inappropriately uh, on OneDrive? We don't, you know. It, 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 and here's the thing: if somebody's going to share something they shouldn't share, what's going to stop them from printing it and sharing it to someone they shouldn't share, or sending it in an email? Um, you know, obviously we have some DLP um, in 365, but I mean that that's easily circumvented. Uh, so, you know, we don't stop them from sharing something we shouldn't share. That is a policy managerial issue, not a technology issue. You know, we, we do also have, um, we just went to uh, Nutanix. Um, so we are going to be migrating our, our network shares to um, files in Nutanix um, so that we can, you know, track, do things a little bit better with that. Um, the licensing that we currently use, we have G3 
and a license and an, or another license that actually doesn't exist anymore, which is a webmail only, um, which we're going to be migrating to G1. And I'd like to get all of it going to an M365 G3 G1. Um, and that way it gives us the you know, in tune across the board as well. And I don't have to buy the uh, core cows and the bridges and all that jazz. Um, so that's, that's kind of what we're moving to. Uh, there's a question in here, guys. How long did it take from standing up to SharePoint to what it is today? What version of the intranet are we on now, Matt? Uh, three, I guess. <laughs> it's gone through several facelifts, so I, it's, it's either three or 2.1, I would say. Um, I think we, we, we started with the SharePoint rollout uh, towards the end of 2016. And it was a uh, very basic using the classic SharePoint um, view. And then around 2018, 2019, we started doing this whole modern look and it was being embraced a lot more because classic SharePoint is very hard to manipulate if you're not um, tech savvy. So, um, but since this whole modern uh, setup, uh, it's it's been embraced a lot because it's so much easier to use You pretty much drag and drop you click in different sections to where you can add um, different items on the site on the go. And, and of course there's an undo button that works. Uh, and um, it's the nice thing is for all the other staff only sites, it's user friendly enough to where uh, we get a hold of someone within their department that wants to manage it for their department, their, their own SharePoint site, or even if there's a group or, or sheriff's department office, they've embraced a lot of these for their like small teams. And we just have a remote session. We show them this is their page. We show them where the edit button is here. And then we show them key features to where um, you could pretty much click on any section, choose what web parts um, that you want to add there. And it's, it's, it's that simple. So I can't explain my, why mine's a little bit laggy right now, but it's all right there. Each one of them has their own options and you could move it around wherever you want. And uh, they get really anxious because they want to go ahead and start playing around with it and not have to worry about breaking anything. So it's, it's very easy. And then, then we don't hear from them anymore because they have no further issues and they're using it, so. Yeah, we hear from very little. Sandra, you had a question about our permissions. And it, as far as the document libraries that we create, they're under one primary site, like our intranet. Uh, what we'll usually do there is break inheritance and then create unique permissions. Um, could be based on our, our current security groups or um, something unique that the department decides they want to utilize to um, provide access to that document library. Uh, they had a question, uh, do we do any custom HTML coding? Um, my answer is I don't. But um, I didn't know if you guys were. <laughs> uh, not really at this moment. Uh, it's something we, we dabble with in the background, but we, we, we kind of have our hands full of what we've got now. So we, we haven't gotten too far with that. We were kind of hoping that, um, you know, we, we we have somebody else here to kind of help foster that part along and develop the SharePoint site or, you know, some of the 365 products to the, the next stage. But um, no, we don't have a lot of uh, experience with that right now. And, and since we're running this session, uh, shameless plug, we are actually hiring for an application person. <laughs> but no, um, we, we, you know, we, we do, we would like to get, uh, you know, add a, add a person to the team that could, you know, do some more of the power apps thing and things like that. Yes. Um, the root for SharePoint is not communication. So created a secondary communication page um, somewhere that we can change the, oh, I don't, I, I don't know. I, no, the, it won't change. It won't, it shouldn't mess up the team's group pages. Um, or it shouldn't, but I would definitely maybe talk to 
get get a third party to kind of talk to about that, Kim. Um, the question from Kim Price, she wants to move, change her communication page to be the root. I, I don't think that would mess things up, but. Um, so the license I spoke of, the G3 and F3, we have F3s also. G3s are full. Um, yeah, so somebody's blaming for me for trying to steal people. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, it's all good. It's all in fun and games. Um, the licensing, the G3 license is, you know, the full office suite. Um, F3 is, is kind of the same thing, but it's a temporary license. We have F3s that we have for temps, um, like we had a bunch for the uh, vaccination clinics. We had nurses for the vaccination clinics, and we got F3 for the term that they were here, um, which is, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's office and, and email and everything. Uh, the G1 is uh, SharePoint Teams and uh, Mail. So, you know, it's a little, um, it's a little lighter. Um, you know, so we can, well, it's on that page. Uh, it's on that link that I sent. It really, um, it spells out what you have access to and what you don't. But if you are looking at upgrading your license, you can change your license, even though you're on a three-year EA, you can change your license at any point when you get to your renewal. Um, and I would definitely look at the M365 as opposed to the Office 365, um, because you you get rid of the bridge, you get rid of the core cows, you get rid of all that jazz, and you know it's done. I think it's like a dollar more or something like that. I don't know. It's not much. Um, I see backups as a question. We actually don't back up anything in 365. We've never had a problem recovering it. Uh, Glenn, can I go ahead and show how we've uh, attached our solutions to our site? Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely. Go for it. Yeah, while the questions are coming in, I just wanted to show you in addition to this uh, resource hub that we have for ourselves, for our help, uh, help desk system, uh, SolarWinds is Symantage. Um, we have the ability to put in all of our fixes of how we uh, have fixed several tickets. So we, this is kind of what it looks like right now. It's very unfiltered and all of our um, solutions are pretty much all listed right here. So if we have the program, we can easily search for uh, a, a possible fix or resolution. But what we've used SharePoint to is we've we've attached um, uh, meta tags to all of our uh, solutions so that these, um, if we had our phone, just going back to Glenn's original thing, we had to fix something for our CAD system. All we had to do was pull this up on our on our uh, cell phone, click on CAD. Uh, let's say we're in the dispatch center and kind of figure out, okay, this is what we need to do. Oh, okay. Uh, Let's see, um, what do I got to work on? You just find the thing that you need to look for and, and uh, you're good to go. So it just filters out that solutions list pretty much. Um, there you go, yeah, turning it off and on again. So our full sh shutdown and start procedure. So. And you know, if you have, uh, I see, still see a lot of licensing questions. If you have licensing questions, we have some wonderful business partners um, that would love to talk to you about this. Um, you know, and the, the business, you know, I'm not going to name any names, but there's some great business partners. Uh, they're here, um, at the conference and they are excellent at this stuff. So, you know, feel free to talk to any of them about this. Another thing that we're trying to explore right now is the, um, with all of our satellite sites throughout the county is uh, it, whenever we have a ticket for a specific area, our ticket system can kind of tag that location and, and pull up a website related to that. So what we've used SharePoint for is to kind of create a list of the current network infrastructure for that area. So whether we know if that, let's say that EMS station is, is on our, our network directly, or if they're using a hardware or software VPN, we could pretty much select it here and get an idea 
of what's currently at that site so we can further troubleshoot that. So we're trying to work a way to where that information automatically pulls from SharePoint, attaches it to the ticket, so we don't have to wait for the network expert to kind of answer those kind of questions. So. so hey, Shantae, I, I, I saw your question about the uh, inventory app, possibly expanding it to another, another version. Um, it is actually on my uh, project list to kind of use um, our help desk and in, integrate it with our help desk to make the um, equipment loaning that we currently do sort of integrate with that. But uh, again, uh, we'll definitely need some help making that work the way that we, we would like it to work. So, so and, yeah, and, we're really good at coming up with great ideas, but tough trying to make the time sometimes to get them done. Dre and, Dre and Matt do a really good job um, with all this stuff. And, and um, they're, they're, gosh, it's just so creative um, and, and so great at doing this stuff. Um, but that, you know, the problem, like problem that we have with that is, you know, they have, um, you know, fantastic ideas for how to move the entire organization forward. Um, and, and they are, um, but, you know, you can only do so much with, with the time that you have in the day, uh, with, you know, everything that's going on, but. I'm sorry, Dre, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, you're fine. I, I was going to uh, address Angelia's question about the uh, embedding the chat within SharePoint. Uh, I, I don't know how that may be something that, may, that you could implement through uh, like SharePoint framework, but um, uh, we haven't uh, dabbled in that part uh, at all. There's nothing built in that will allow you to just drop that chat or right into a, a SharePoint online site. So no, but you um, could grab a link to the chat uh, and throw it onto that SharePoint site so that somebody can get to it easily. Right, right. Um, is our AD on prem or are we using Azure as our primary? Um, neither. I think we're in adaptive as our primary. Um, and so that's our federated uh, AD is through Adaptive, which was Centrify. Uh, so we have an on-prem AD that feeds Adaptive. Um, you know, Adaptive is really the, um, the the federated for our 365 and forces it geofences our users, forces MFA everything, and we do all that through Adaptive. Um, and we are in hybrid. Exchange, although um, you know, with the latest Exchange nasties, we uh, got rid of our uh, the website on the on the internal. And I think did Ted turn off the internal one? We're still in a hybrid. I think I think this we still have a mail server, but um, he turned off yeah, the web access. We are to it. we are still hybrid, but there is like you said, there's no external access to the um, um, Outlook at this point. You know, the, the thing is users, um, you know, it's kind of slow going getting users to to dive into this, but once they do, they really they really take off and run with it. Um, so, you know, we'll say, you know, it's worth building those relationships with the users and the departments, uh, go spend time with them, show them how this works and how well it works. And you know, bring it up on your phone, on your cell phone, or on your iPad, or whatever, and show them that they can access this stuff wherever, whenever. And and that's powerful because you can't do that with a shared network drive. And 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 having all that collaboration in one spot, and and you know that page that Matt showed you before, our IT page. Um, just to be clear. That was not like Glenn's idea. That was not, hey, Matt, I need you to make a page where everything is. Um, Matt and Dre worked on that together. And then we were having an, um, just a team meeting. And they were like, 
hey guys, check this out. You think this would be useful? And everybody fell out of their chairs, um, you know, because it was so cool. Uh, so, you know, I would definitely recommend trying to build something like that because that's just a wonderful way to do that information sharing. Yes, um, you have complete control over who accesses the files or SharePoint site. Um, Angelia, that's, um, you know, just because it's it's out on the internet doesn't mean people can't, you know, you can't control access to it. Like for instance, we have um, uh, a COVID uh, sharing, data sharing site um, because we had the base and the hospital that was doing um, COVID testing but yet the, um, the health department was responsible for reporting that up to the state. Um, so we only allowed individuals that we were notified of from the base and from the hospital, and those individuals had access to that SharePoint site. Um, other people, nobody else could get there if they had, even if they had the link, it wouldn't let them go. So you can definitely restrict it like that. Do we have an employee facing ITS or department site? Yeah. Yes, we do. Um, Matt, can you bring up the uh, ITS, the, our employee facing IT site? Sure. It's thinking. Yep. And um, yeah, we have it. It's, um, I don't think a lot of people go to it, um, but. Oh, I, I, he's making a face. I guess they do. <laughs> we do get some traffic here. I would like yeah. to think so at least. Yeah. Uh, but the, yeah, this is all, as you can see from this list, uh, all uh, departments do get their own site as well as their own internal site. Some are a lot more uh, active on theirs than others. Some we just show that where their address is. But of course, for us, since we're more uh, service driven to our employees, we put uh, a lot of our useful links here uh, to create a ticket, borrow equipment. Um, if they needed to replace their APC, what uh, what to do, different procedures, all, all those useful links right here, as well as any uh, news uh, prom promoting what we've done uh, to help the community. So, so uh, I, I'm gonna ask this question to Dre. Um, we did all this overnight, right, Dre? We just said, hey, let's have a SharePoint site, and then boom, it was there. Yeah, I didn't even touch the keyboard. I just walked in, and it was like, it was ready to go. <laughs> now, like, like, what's the evolution of this? Like, how, I mean, like, people are seeing a finished product, right? We've been working on SharePoint since we got 365. I want to say it was almost uh, five years ago. Um, I mean, it has been a continual process since I got here. Uh, when I first started, you know, we were working in conjunction with the HR department to try to help um, or provide the different departments, staff only sites with a training hub to let them get in there and um, orient new people. Um, and we've just been going ever since. Uh, I don't think we've stopped. Matt kind of spearheaded this new design um, template whenever we moved over to the modern um, modern pages and then we we went back and we said okay let's kind of update the old sites to, to mimic that and provide that same flow throughout and then on and then on top of that let the li liaisons know in each department hey this is kind of where, what we're looking at uh, these are new tools that are, that are available and run with them and if you can provide any feedback on how we can do it a little bit better ourselves, please do. Um, that, that, that's been a big help. Yeah, definitely. Now, so there's some questions about external access. Um, we don't have external access turned on for every SharePoint site. Um, we allow it, but we have to go to the site. You know, you know, it, they have to tell us you know, that they need it and why do they need it. And then we enable external access to that site. We try to, you know, we want people to use this instead of, you know, maybe a personal uh, Dropbox or, you know, some or a USB stick or, you know, some kind of garbage like that. I want them to do it some, with something we control. Um, 
you know, but we, um, so when they want to share something externally, um, especially with somebody that's going to, you know, it's going to be repetitive, it's going to be a relationship with someone outside of our organization, then we point them to SharePoint and we create a, a special site um, for that, for that activity um, so that, you know, we can manage it and make sure that it's, um, that it's secure and that, you know, we're not doing things that are, you know, we shouldn't be doing. Um, employee data. Oh, that's a, this is a great question from Anonymous Anonymous. So we, we struggled with this initially, um, you know, because people leave and, you know, you need access to that data. But holy cow, with 365, this got so easy. Um, we decided to make a SharePoint site, which um, is uh, don't bring up. <laughs> and uh, the, the SharePoint site that has, uh, it's just documents, right? And it, we have a folder for each department under there. It, under that folder, we'd, we'd move that person's OneDrive. And we, you know, we just store it, we archive it on the SharePoint site. And then if a supervisor or a manager or somebody calls, I, I require a uh, department head or, you know, in a larger department, at least the division heads to request it of us. Um, and then, you know, we'll grant access to that employee's OneDrive data to, you know, to their manager like that. Litigation hold is turned on for all our employees every night uh, as far as their email is concerned. So yes, we have all that turned on every night um and then uh you know we we on their on their emails and this is a question that um, um school of government is is kind of re uh, wrestling with is you know what do you do with with employees emails right previously you would make them you know a shared email and then you, you know you could share that email with other people when well, now they're saying they're not sure if we're allowed to do that so you know, I'm I'm kind of waiting to hear definitively from school of government that you know we can't do it that way, and then we got to figure out a new way to do it. But, um, but yeah, that's how we handle employee data. Is that we move it to a SharePoint site because we got gobs and gobs of storage online. Um, but I don't want to buy all that locally. Yeah, you can do it with a record retention policy. That's a good idea, Mike. We may have we may have to look into doing that. Yep, that's a good idea. Any other any other questions? From, oh, by the way, uh, one other neat thing that we did that um, I love because I'm an IT guy is um, we we taught our HR department how to do e-discovery, right? So we went up to HR and taught them how to do the e-discovery so that they don't ask us to do all that. Uh, so when they're doing an investigation, they just do the investigation. And so the head, the my HR director is over, you know, she can see every investigation. You know, she's the top dog in e-discovery. Uh, she has that role. And so, um, you know, we're not, we still do it. I mean, you know, they still call us to do, to do that from time to time, and to do like, um, um, re you know, um, when they as a records request or something like that. You know, we do that stuff from time to time, but we taught HR how to do it, so we don't have to do a lot of that. Yeah, we get way less calls about this stuff now, which is oh, yeah. great on our end. Yeah, because that's the suckiest part, or one of the suckiest parts of being in IT, is getting involved in a in an employee investigation. You know, I mean that nobody enjoys that. That sucks. So um, you know, having HR do that that made it easier because then they have they want it that way because they don't want a lot of hands in the pot. You know, so it makes sense to them, makes sense to us. We don't have to do something that sucks. And they don't have a lot of hands in that pot. So, you know, and it was, and it's easy. It's not like it's hard. So, you know, um, let me look back at the chat. So I would definitely recommend you uh, going to your HR department, um, you know, learn how to do the e-discovery 
and then go there and say, hey, guys, let me show you this awesome tool. And I, and I really need you to own this because, you know, this is, you know, this is what you guys do. And this is important for you and not, you know, you don't want a whole lot of hands in the pot. And, you know, however you need to sell it, uh, definitely get them to do that stuff. One of the one of the things that that um, we've been doing is is transitioning um, and and moving a lot of um, stuff from our on prem exchange. We got a lot of public folders and that kind of thing. Um, and this is one of the things that I'm kind of struggling with right now. Um, I know you guys showed the the calendars, um, but did y'all find that that it's just kind of a, a hybrid mix of various different solutions as to what is the best way to, to tackle what used to be public folders and and um, the, the new way of handling things. I, I'm just finding that the, the structure uh, of permissions and stuff like that is much more simplified um, in Office 365 versus, and, and that's, that's a good thing. It's just, there's not like for DSS and stuff like that, there's not as much granular control and getting them to accept that. It, it's kind of where I'm, I'm struggling. We found a way not to do it. You know, we, <laughs> the uh, way we did, the way we did here. it. <laughs> yeah. The way we did it is, is, you know, we left some stuff, some of the groups in and, and things like that in the, in the SharePoint and the local, and then we created the new ones online. You know what, honestly, even if you have to put, put a, a line in the sand and say from here on out, it's in 365. That is better. You know, rebooting and starting over in 365 is better than having crap in both places. And that's kind of what I'm finding. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, we, we definitely do have, still have a lot of public folders and we try to encourage the departments who are still utilizing those to use the, the new tools. Um, and it's not successful a lot, but um, every now and then uh, somebody will say, okay, well, I, I actually really don't need that thing that we, it, that we were using um, five years ago. So let's try it out. And then we don't hear anything from them and they just keep rolling on. And luckily, I mean, on a lot of our stuff, that has been the result it is, mm -hmm. is uh, yeah, we don't really even use that anymore. So <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's funny the, when you get something into 365, like Dre's saying, we it's done. Like it's done. Once it's up there, it's done. You don't get a lot of problems with it. It's just done. Um, is there functionality differences in SharePoint based on the license? Um, that's a really good question, Jeff. Um, I think some of the differences, I believe the G1 only allows the web version of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and that kind of thing. So if somebody edits a file, they have to use the web version or the app version, um, and they can't use the installed version. I think that's that's probably the biggest version, the, the biggest difference. But again, I, I recommend you talk to one of our wonderful business partners are, are so fantastic in supporting these this event um, and they'll be happy to walk you through that which what's also kind of neat um, is we did kind of dabble in um, in Azure a little bit um, we need to probably get back into it uh, at some point but we dabbled in Azure for a little bit and there are some um, you know, Darren does his voice, uh, his chatbot thing. There actually is a natural language processor in Azure. There's some other stuff. So you can actually build this in Azure if you have applications people. Um, I had an intern here that was trying to build a chatbot that was going to do searching on internal SharePoint sites um, using natural language. So I think of it as an Alexa for SharePoint is what I was trying to get him to build. But unfortunately he got about halfway through it and then, you know, he had to go. So we haven't, we haven't picked that back up again, but I want an internal chat bot on SharePoint. I want to sit at my desk and go, um, you know, uh, Osprey find information on whatever and it bring up, you know, SharePoint information for me. Osprey. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. <laughs> we we have a lot of ospreys out here. Um, some of them are actual birds. <laughs> um, our ticket info actually isn't populated in SharePoint. We use um, the ticket stuff. Well. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I know what he's saying. You guys want to handle that? Sure. Yeah. Th this is uh, we could make it to where this feeds data in uh, externally, but we haven't made that connection yet. This is more of a monthly input that we add, but it's using SharePoint's uh, graphs to kind of show where we are with tickets um, and compare it from previous years to get an idea. So. Right now, this is all done manually, I believe. You're inputting the, the information manually, but this is where um, uh, somebody who is a little bit more experienced with coding could step in and, and automate this. So we're actually um, past our time. We're supposed to wrap up at 3.15. Um, you know, we're gonna stay here for a little bit if you guys have some more questions. Um, you know, Feel free to email us though. Uh, if you have specific questions, um, you know, out, outside of this or later on or a month down the road or whatever, uh, feel free to email us. We're, we're happy to help or just throw it up on the listserv. Uh, but we just want to thank everyone for coming here today. I especially want to thank Matt and Dre, um, you know, for, for showcasing all this stuff, but also for all the hard work creating it. Um, you know, they're just awesome, uh, awesome members of my team. So, um, Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us and uh, we hope you have a great rest of your conference. And we'll hang out for a little bit. Thank you. Thanks guys. Hey, this is Earl with Pender. Matt, can you possibly go back to that um, page that you had that had the uh, graphs on it again? Sure. And scroll down just a little bit, just so I can, yep, perfect. Oh, go back up a little bit. A little bit more. Thanks. You're giving me ideas. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Actually, we're, we're trying to get as many ideas as we can, too. <laughs> this is great stuff. I mean, um, you know, for us, we're, we're really trying to, uh, to get a better handle on projects and presenting that to management. And, um, and Jennifer Price is awesome, you know, and she's, uh, she's done a really good job of, of presenting that or coming up with kind of a, a, uh, a template for us to use so this would be a yeah. good thing to possibly put out there for management so we're not having to constantly feed them information in an email or whatnot we can just say here's our statuses on things so yeah we actually use planner to manage our projects do you um yeah we use we use planner to manage our projects we we went to um um new hanover mm -hmm. um and saw how they did you know their agile yes and we took uh like 30% of that and brought it back. And initially we created a SharePoint site to do this, but then planner became available and we moved it. Um, and, you know, now it's all in planner. Now I don't know how you guys, do you guys know how we could rip data out of here as far as um, time to close and things like that, or, you know, as far as do we close a project on time and things like that? Do you know how we could do something like that to create a metrics? I'm not sure if um, what's baked into Planner itself to allow us to do that, but mm. all this information exists as a SharePoint list uh, between Planner and, and um, some of the other applications. It's just a list that's presented in a different way. So the data is there. It's just a matter of um, figuring out what hook you need to use to pull it over. Oh, that uh, By the way, that trading post, there's an intranet trading post. Dre's working on this. He's almost done. Um, I think he's just waiting for people to approve it, but we're trying to change that, um, um, 
you know, that cork board that you see in the break room that, hey, I got a lawnmower, hey, I've got a whatever. Yeah. We're trying to move that to our intranet so that people can do that stuff there. Oh, man, that's awesome. I did something like that years ago with our intranet and did almost like a, an internal kind of uh, deal where it was like a trading type thing and it didn't yep. catch on, but um, it was a kind of a way of not sending out the all users about church picnics and things. Oh gosh. Yeah. So yeah. no, we don't allow anyone <laughs> to send the all users. We have them email us and then we put it on. We yeah. do allow them to put stuff on the agenda, on the, um, on the internet, as far as the calendar is concerned, mm -hmm. and then we approve it. So go ahead and put it out there and, you know, they do that and then we just approve it. Yeah, we, we're, we're very, very, we, we are now very tight with our all users, but in the past we've had, we had to kind of tighten it down with calls of folks sending out personal things that really shouldn't go out. And cause I mean, it goes to commissioners, it goes to a lot of different people. And some people don't have a filter. Some people don't have a filter and it's really inappropriate for them to send things like that out anyway. But that's a great idea to kind of have a the court board type situation, like you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, there's a there's an approval workflow attached to all the the new stuff that we're doing. So um, nobody's going to be able to just throw stuff out without it being approved. Yeah. I'm very I'm very interested in uh, in a lot of what what you're doing. Um, you know, and trying to do the same here. But like you said earlier, it's all about time. It's never having the time to do it. But no, no, I mean, it's easy for me. <laughs> yeah, they just they just come and they're like, hey, Glenn, you want to see something cool? I'm like, yeah, I always want to see something cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then they show me something cool. <laughs> so that's great. That's great. Well, gentlemen, thank you for uh, for taking a few minutes and uh, and showing me that uh, a little bit of information. I'm going to take it back. And um, and talk to my folks or our folks and um, see if that's something we want to kind of look at doing. Cool. So Thanks, thank Earl. you guys. Great presentation. Yeah. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Cheryl. Bye. Thank you all for joining us on today. We're going to end this session with our Tanium, our gold sponsor, Tanium. Tanium provides unified endpoint management and security built for the world's demanding IT environments. Our breakthrough approach decentralizes data collection, aggregation, and distribution down to the endpoint, dramatically reducing direct client to server, communications to deliver transformational scale, speed, and reliability. This is why the world's most sophisticated organizations, including nearly half of the Fortune 100, all six branches of the US Armed Forces, and over 70% of the top retailers and financial institutions trust Tanium to help them confidently manage performance, detect, and respond to threats and ensure compliance across their operations. Learn more at www.tanium.com. Thank you. Thanks, Tabitha. I'm sorry I didn't know you were here. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs>